Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work in solving this lovely math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem here. It is the following. The length of a rectangle is three times its width. If the area of this rectangle is 48, what is the length and width of the rectangle? Okay, so I'm not going to give you any hints as I want to give you a full opportunity to show off your math skills. So if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'll thoroughly explain the solution to this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy the content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the solution here. The correct answer is 12 by four. All right, so the length is 12 and the width is four for this particular triangle. Now, if you got this right, that is very, very good. Matter of fact, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving quadratic equation word problems. Now, they won't know what that means, but it just sounds so impressive to say. And who knows, you might say, you know what, I'm going to take you out to dinner because one day I know you're going to make a lot of money and I want to get on your good side. But uh, all jokes aside, if you are confused, uh, you know, with this problem, you're like, ah, I'm not smart enough to get this. Well, anyone can be very, very good, very, very good in math. OK, never, ever, ever think you're not smart enough to do anything, particularly in math. OK, even if you struggle with math. Uh, you can learn this stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do my best to explain the solution. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So the first thing we need to do is read the problem. And obviously that seems uh, pretty, you know, clear as being the first step. But a lot of people, when they're faced with a, a math word problem or even any uh, problem uh, in general, uh, they don't really understand the problem well enough. Okay. If you don't truly understand the problem, you're not going to be able to see the solution. So I always like to use the rule of three. Read a problem at least three times and really make sure you understand the question. Now, in this particular problem, we're talking about a rectangle. And again, obviously, we got information about the rectangle, about uh, its length and width and the area. And um, we have to kind of take this information and be able to visualize it. Okay, You always want to try to visualize a problem if you can. Some problems are uh, easier to visualize than others. And here, we're talking about a rectangle, so it's probably a pretty good idea to draw a rectangle. Now, as I draw this uh, rectangle, I'll show you mine here in a second, we want to start thinking about the information about this particular rectangle, right? And that is the length of the rectangle is three times its width. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, I have a rectangle, and of course I'll show you mine here in a second, but we're going to have to make a comparison between the width and the length. Now, I, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to solve for the length and width. So when you don't have... Uh, you know, any value with for what you're looking for. Okay, and that's kind of probably pretty terrible grammar or, or uh, English, what I just used there, or what I just said. Uh, again, you know, I do, uh, you know, teach math. I don't teach English per se. But anyways, let me try to rephrase what I want to say here. So in a math word problem, when you are looking for an unknown value, you want to start thinking in terms of a variable, okay? So we want to start using some algebra, all right? I think that's a little bit more, um, you know, better expressed, if you will. So you're like, all right, I got this problem. I'm looking for the, uh, the length and width of this rectangle. So I'm going to need a variable to represent, uh, you know, these unknown values. Okay, so with that in uh, mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch of a rectangle. Now, here is a rectangle. Now, if you were just drawing this on a piece of paper and you went like that, I would interpret that as being a rectangle. But just to be precise, uh, you know, kind of a little bit, uh, this is a little technical detail, but it is important. Rectangles have right angles, okay, 90 degrees. And to indicate that, you need to put this little kind of square in there. That indicates that this is a right angle, 90 degrees. 
because if you don't, then someone could say, maybe you have a parallelogram or maybe you have a trapezoid, you know, uh, so just be careful. Uh, that's a little technical thing here, but it can come up, especially for some of you out there that may be in uh, algebra or geometry courses. All right, so I have this rectangle, and I know that the length is three times more than the width. So this is the width of the rectangle, and this is the length of the rectangle. Now, let's go back to our problem here. Three times, right? What does three times mean? Well, if uh, we have to first, before we answer that question, we have to um, first select a variable. And I'm going to use the variable x, but x needs to represent something. Now, should we uh, have that uh, variable x represent the length or the width? Well, you can actually do this problem both ways, but it's much easier if you let the variable x represent the width because the length will be three times the width, which would be 3x. So in algebra, when we do multiplication of a number and a variable, like 3 times x, we don't go 3 times, like say 3 times 4, that would be very confusing, right? We wouldn't go 3 times x like this. Uh, this is exactly why we don't use this notation. It's just 3x, okay? So this means 3 times x. All right, so if our width is x and our, uh, our length is 3 times the width, we can express the length as 3x. Okay, now, now that we have our kind of, um, you know, uh, diagram here and we kind of visualize uh, a part of this problem, we have to start thinking about how am I going to figure out the value of this variable x? Well, we have these unknown values in this particular problem. It's x. The only way you're going to be able to figure out what x is equal to is you need to set up an equation, okay? And this is the whole key thing about using algebra. You can't figure out what a variable is equal to unless we can construct an equation, and that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to use the rest of the information in the problem to set up an equation and to solve. So let's go ahead and take a look at that next step. And in order to do this problem, you will need to know this basic uh, uh, formula for area of a rectangle, okay? Now, some of the most interesting uh, math word problems are those that combine algebra and geometry. But just in case you forgot what the area of a rectangle is, it is the length times the width. All right, so that's the area uh, of a rectangle. That's the formula for it. But let's just notice here something. Uh, first of all, the problem indicates, and let me kind of go back up to the problem, is that we know that the area of this rectangle is 48. So we have that information, right? So, okay, I know the area is 48. And I also know that uh, the area of a rectangle is length times the, the width. But let's just notice uh, something here. This is a formula, but it's also an equation, okay? So in other words, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So we can actually construct an actual equation with this given information uh, in such a way where we can solve for this variable x. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so we know that the area is equal to the length times the width the area of a rectangle. We know the area uh, of this particular uh, rectangle is 48. And we know what the length is and the width is in terms of this variable x, right? So we're going to let uh, x uh, be the width. We already kind of... Um, uh, you know, um, assign that. So the length is three times the width, so that's going to be 3x. So here we have a, uh, have or constructed an algebraic equation. And now our objective is to solve this equation for x. Okay, so this is the next part of doing this. So 3x, this is 3 times x times x. x times x is x squared, so this right here is 3x squared. Now, some of you might be uh, wondering why I have the 3x squared on the left-hand side. Well, in an equation, if the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, well, the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. You can uh, switch uh, things uh, one side to another side uh, in an equation, okay, if it's convenient for you. And typically, we want the variable expression on the left-hand side of an equation, okay? So, but it's not necessary. You could you could solve this with uh, having the 3x squared on the other side. For me though, it's my preference to have the variables on the left. Okay, so now what we need to do is solve this lovely equation. And we have an x squared uh, here. So this is by definition what we call a quadratic equation. Don't get alarmed about that term like, oh, that's so advanced. No, it's just stuff that you learn uh, in your kind of first year algebra course. But what you need to know is that this variable to the second power, this two 
means that this equation will have two solutions, and I'll show you the solutions right now. Okay, so to solve this equation, what we need to do first is isolate the x squared, and the way we're going to do that is divide both sides of the equation by 3. Okay, so 48 uh, divided by 3 is 16. Now I have x squared is equal to 16. Okay, so to solve this uh, equation right now, all we need to do is take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 16 for, this, uh, for the purposes of this problem is both positive and negative 4. Now, if I just asked you without an equation, I say, hey, what's the square root of 16? The correct answer is 4. Okay, this right here is called the principal square root. Notice, I'm just asking you a question. Hey, what's the square root of 16? You will say 4. Okay, you don't say positive and negative 4. You only use the positive and negative version uh, when you're solving uh, things like quadratic equations because positive 4 times positive 4 is 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 is also a positive 16. So both of these are uh, the solutions. Remember, uh, in a quadratic equation, there is two solutions, okay? And these are the two solutions, 4 and negative 4. We just typically write, uh, you know, uh, we don't write one answer is 4, one answer is negative 4. We just put a positive negative to indicate uh, there is a positive 4 and negative 4 is two unique solutions to this equation. Okay, but what do we just do? Okay, well, we just solved for x. So x is what? Well, x can either be 4 or negative 4, but what are we talking about here? Well, x, remember, is the width of this uh, uh, rectangle, so we're not going to use the negative 4. We're not going to have negative width, so we're going to have the positive version, so x will be equal to 4. Okay, so I'm going to show you the rest of this problem, which is not that much more to go, but before I do that, I am going to ask you if you would, you could, uh, if you would consider subscribing to my channel, okay? Now, the reason why I ask is because it does make a huge difference, uh, not only for me personally, but for my uh, objective, which is to really grow my channel, really to kind of grow my uh, online classroom. I'm trying to reach people that are interested in math, just enjoy mathematics. Maybe they want to kind of relearn some math, but in particular, I'm, I'm looking to reach people that uh, struggle in mathematics and maybe you know are on the verge of giving up because that is... Uh, a real, real problem. Okay, so many people, and maybe you can relate to this, have, you know, just kind of identified as them being bad in math. I can't do math. And it has uh, real serious implications. Uh, I've heard these stories for many, 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 many years of like, well, uh, you know, some teacher told me I was bad in math or I failed in math class. Therefore, I gave up on my dream of being an engineer or whatever the case is. Okay. So, Whatever you do, okay, don't give up on math. What you need is support, encouragement, and clear and understandable instruction. So uh, by you subscribing, it really does help me uh, grow my channel to reach those folks. And you might as well hit that uh, bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so thanks for listening to my little uh, pitch there. Back to the problem. All right, so this is going to be pretty straightforward now. Because we solved that equation, x is equal to 4, what does that mean? Well, remember, x was the width, so we already know the width now. It is 4, and the length is 3 times the width, so it's 3x. So if x is 4, we're just going to replace this x with 4, so 3 times 4 is 12. Now, just to kind of verify that we, in fact, did this problem right, we know that the area of this rectangle is 48, and we know the uh, formula for the area of a rectangle, it's length times the width. So let's go ahead and just check our, our work here. So 12 times 4, that's the length and that's the width. Four, uh, 4 times 12, is that 48? Indeed it is. So all this checks out. Okay, so what level of math is, uh, you know, are we doing here? Well, this is kind of basically algebra 1, first year algebra stuff. Uh, you don't even need to know too much geometry uh, to know this. And this is kind of basic basic level algebra but uh, you know basic to one person might be advanced to another okay now if you want to learn this stuff and really kind of get some serious instruction on it then i'm going to encourage you to check out my algebra one course i'll leave a link to it in the description below but if you're not ready for algebra one you're like well i'm not ready for that well i'm going to leave uh, all my courses down there you want to start 
if you truly want to kind of get back into math, you want to start with my Math Foundations course, which is just a quick little mini boot camp for basic math skills. And then you move on to pre-algebra and algebra one and geometry and then algebra two and pre-calculus. If you go through all those courses, then you'll be ready uh, for calculus. Now, a lot of you may not want to go that far, but if you uh, are interested in kind of, you know, uh, seeing how far you could take math, that is the path to go. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.